this life realization. People are so busy with sense gratification that they completely forget about self-realization. Out of madness, they frankly say that there's no need for self-realization because they do not realize that this brief life is a rather moment in our great journey towards self-realization. The whole system of education is geared to sense gratification. And if a learned man thinks it over, he sees that the children of this age are being intentionally sent to the slaughterhouses of so-called education. Learned men, therefore, must be cautious of this age. And if they at all want to cross over the dangerous ocean of Kali, they must follow the footsteps of the sages of Nami Sharanya and accept Sri Sutta Goswami or his bona fide representative as the captain of the ship. The ship is the message of Lord Krishna in the shape of Bhagavad Gita or Srimad Bhagavatam. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So the, uh, it's understood, Atato Brahma Jigyasa. The scriptures give us a clear understanding what is the goal of life. Uh, every activity must lead to a particular goal. And life itself is an activity that we experience. In other words, we take birth. Why do we take birth? Why do we take birth? What is the purpose of our birth? Well, the purpose of our birth is that the fact to accept the material body. So by accepting a material body, we find ourselves in an atmosphere where we are educated, guided, cared for and uh, moved along uh, on programs and processes that are meant to solidify and to fortify our life in this world. In other words, this is what goes on as education. This goes on with life itself. But the scriptures clearly enjoin, and this is continuously delineated throughout the scriptures uh, that to take on a material body is unnatural because we are not material. We are pure spiritual beings. Jivar Sarupai Krishnera Nityadas. And this is one of many thousands of verses that gives us our identity. Nahanyate Hanyamani Sarire. For the soul, there's neither birth nor death. Uh, once having been, does he cease to be? He's unborn, undying, primeval. He's not slain when the body is slain. So the uh, soul is different than the body. And the soul is the activating force within the body, which gives life to the body. But the body is not the purpose of life. The purpose of life is to realize ourselves as separate from the body, as being an individual, pure, spiritual soul or spirit of spiritual essence that is connected with the source, our source. As material has a source, just like we take birth and we receive a, a body by the combination of our mother and father and a body comes out. The mother supplies the body, the father supplies the life. And then we come out. And then, so therefore, our material existence has a, you know, a connection to our birth. So in the same way, our spiritual existence also is connected to the same essence of our existence. In other words, Something spiritual is, a, is the cause of our spiritual existence. And that is Krishna, or the Supreme Absolute Personality of Godhead, which is the source of everything, both material and spiritual. So that we can accept and that we understand also. Now we are placed in this particular world at a certain time, a certain age, a certain time period in the human, what we say, the human uh, cosmic clock, 
And so we wound up now, we are here in the, what is called the Kali Yuga on Earth planet. We could be in millions of different places, but this is where we are. We happen to be on the Earth planet in Kali Yuga, in a particular body, in a particular place within the Earth planet. So none of these things are, well, what we say happening by chance. When people say, well, this is all chance, because it's a, it's a nice way to say, I don't know. A learned man would say, I don't know why this, my situation is like this. But those who don't want to acknowledge that there is reason behind it, they call it chance. And it's another way of saying, I don't know. But there is a source of our existence and there's a reason why we're here when we're here. So here we are in Kali Yuga. And as this verse in purport explains, this Kali Yuga deteriorates all the good qualities of the human being, such as memory, strength, finer sentiments. It decreases age, people, lifespans decrease. Um, better qualities means compassion towards others. Um, Many, many of the natural qualities that are made in other ages where people have these things strong. In Kali Yuga, this is all under attack and gradually is diminishing. And especially age, people are living less and less years in their duration of life because of the, the age is so bad. So here we find that there is a glorification of a great personality who can take us all out of this age. Just like if you want to cross an ocean and the ocean is very vast, you need a good ship. <laughs> and you also need a captain that knows how to, to uh, operate the ship, navigate the ship and bring the ship to the destination. So that's that that personality is the spiritual master. So here, this particular verse is glorifying Sutta Goswami, who is one of many in the line of spiritual masters. Just like Srila Prabhupada, he came. We can use this verse here and says that we have, by our good fortune, somehow we've met you. It's just like here, just, we think that we have met your goodness by the will of providence. In other words, we are drowning in this ocean of material existence, overwhelmed by the materialistic demeanor, which is constantly fortifying and, and directing our consciousness in the way that is opposite our true happiness, our true knowledge and true nature. In other words, Everything is pointed to the body. And it's all about the body. But we are not the body. We are simply the soul within the body. So in order to get out of this realm of material existence, which is compared in many places throughout the Shastra, the analogy quite fits, is like a great ocean. No one can swim across an ocean. Even the most Olympic swimmers who have great you know, gold medals for their swimming can never swim across an ocean. It's just too vast and too dangerous at the same time. Uh, but if you have a good captain and a good ship, favorable winds to blow the ship in the right direction, all of these things make the trip a, journey, a pleasant journey across the ocean. And then the analogy is also given that by the power of one's accepting the guidance of a pure spiritual personality, the, the spiritual master, then the ocean is no longer vast or dangerous. It sinks, it shrinks, I'm sorry. It shrinks just like if you have a body of water and there's a lot of sun, but no rain, you'll find that the sun will dry up the water in due course of time 
then gradually that body of water will become less. <laughs> so in the same way, devotional service dries up this ocean of material existence where it becomes easy to cross without any effort at all. And all of that is centered around here, the spiritual master. So we come into this world and we have so many directors. We have our father, we have our mother in schools, we have our teachers, we have the social environment where there's, there's people in different political and social positions also directing us on how to act and how to live within the, this, the world. So we meet so many people who play the role of directing us in one way or the other. But when we find the, the good, when we find our good fortune, it is mentioned that everyone has some good fortune because everyone is part of Krishna. Therefore, everyone has some good fortune. That good fortune may be Gupta, means it might be hidden, but still that good fortune exists. And here, if we come in contact and can recognize the bona fide spiritual master and understand that this is where I can overcome all the difficulties of material life and attain to my pure spiritual nature, that is good fortune. And here, so if some great soul appears in our life, like Srila Prabhupada appeared in our life, and uh, we weren't necessarily looking for Srila Prabhupada, but he came. And he came by the, by the will of the Lord to do the work of giving us or awakening us within us our good fortune. And what is our good fortune? As we sing every day, uh, Shri Guru Charana Padma Kevala Bhakati Sadma Vando Muhi Sarvad Mate Yanhada Prasade Bhai E Baba Turiyo Yai Krishna Prapti Hoi Hoi Te Krishna Prapti that the spiritual master takes you across this great ocean of material existence and brings you to the lotus feet of Krishna. That is our good fortune. There is where our good fortune is found. And so, therefore, one should really appreciate in a very real way what Srila Prabhupada has given us by taking advantage of what he has given us. If you want to appreciate someone, you take advantage of what they're offering to you. And that way, the person also becomes happy because they've come for that reason and those who accept it and benefit for it that becomes the good fortune of both the spiritual master and the those who take his his uh, guidance his shelter so that is our good fortune um, we have somehow or other come across his divine grace ac bhakti vedanta swami Prabhupada who was a person who was sent by Sri Krishna to this material world to do the work of bringing the conditioned souls back to the spiritual world. Prabhupada would explain that this is my only business to somehow bring, Krishna desires that everyone goes back to home, back to Godhead in loving service to him. So he's doing the work that Krishna desires. Therefore, he becomes very dear to Krishna. And by accepting his guidance, we also become dear to Krishna. So that is the benefit. And we can see that this age of Kali, the sages in Nami Sarani are describing, will be describing some of these symptoms of the age of Kali here. And as Prabhupada alludes to the 12th canto as being the place where you'll find all of the anomalies that exist within Kali Yuga. And there are many, many. And a few are mentioned in this verse and throughout the, the cantos. But when you come to the 12th canto, 
symptoms of the age of Kali, you'll find that it is one form of degradation after another. Um, we all hope for the best. It's just natural that the human being always wants things to go in a nice way, in a very, what we say, spiritual way. But that's not always the case. Of course, we should not be fearful. We should know what this age of Kali is about and intelligently, without any fear, avoid. And becoming free from fear is all part of becoming Krishna conscious. The more we become Krishna conscious, the more we're free from the element of fear. This fear is a product of the illusion of material happiness. In other words, I want to be happy, but there's so many reasons why I can't be happy because things are of this nature. In other words, accepting that the material world is what it is, we can realize that it's a difficult place. We don't have to be fearful. Uh, but if we have some fear, then that fear should inspire us to take shelter of Krishna's holy name. There's where we become fearless. Abayam means fearlessness. So when we chant the holy names of the Lord, we can develop this mood of fearlessness, which comes due to the, the degradations of the age of color. It is a very inauspicious age. And as the scriptures enjoin, the progress of Kali Yuga will only continue to become worse and worse and worse. <clears throat> but at the same time, while the, the material society will continue to degrade itself, sometimes we think, oh, well, you know, we're in a difficult material situation, but it will get better. Um, I think this is the will of the wisp <laughs> in the sense that there's no place in the Shastras would say that the material world will get any better. It might be a little better or a little worse at different times, but it's always meant to destroy the good qualities of the living being. And that is the, that is the effects of the age of Kali. So if we take shelter of devotional service and especially this verse is really helping us to appreciate the presence of the spiritual master. By appreciating the, the spiritual master, we investigate what we should do in our devotional life that will support our relationship with the spiritual master. Then that relationship has a meaning. Okay. So these are some things. Um, therefore, those who are uh, looking for spiritual masters or those who have spiritual masters should understand they are all representatives in the absolute sense of the term of his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, who is the real spiritual master for the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. He is the guiding force in his activities, his words, his words in different forms, such as his books and various other, uh, other forms of media he used. So we have, uh, we have the shelter, which will push back the age of Kali. Um, age of Kali is very, very dangerous, but it is still part of the illusionary energy. In other words, material, although it can cause so much trouble, it has no substance. Its substance is, is the illusion that it presents, that's all. If we accept that illusion, then we have to accept everything else that comes with it, such as anxiety, fear, and other, you say, qualities that are 
uh, contrary to the soul's existence. But when we take shelter of Krishna in the devotional service, and particularly chant his holy name, and try to carefully hear and, and imbibe and then apply the instructions of the spiritual master, then our progress in Krishna Kanta Taktwa De Hom Porna Janmani nineteen Mamati Sarjuna. It becomes direct and we can go right back to Godhead even in this short life. So um, we cannot uh, underestimate the glory of Srila Prabhupada, who is not only a spiritual master, but a divine manifestation of Krishna's compassion upon the fallen souls in this age. He was directly sent by the Lord from the spiritual world to do this work as a service to the living entities. According to the cosmic clock, it was time for the Lord to descend as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he did. And now there was some, there was meant someone to come and teach what Lord Chaitanya was actually giving to us. And that was Srila Prabhupada. So everything is arranged by the Lord for our benefit. Taking advantage of it means we are intelligent. Another form of intelligence, which is described in this particular verse, is that uh, those who are actually intelligent can understand the dangers of this age. And therefore they don't get involved in, you know, in the activities of Kali Yuga. So everyone has a chance to become learned, whether you develop it or whether you receive it from the outside. This learning is to understand that we have a way out of this material energy, which brings us to our natural constitutional position of loving the Supreme Lord in devotional service with complete knowledge.
Go Ranga. Hare Krishna. Oh, Hare Krishna. Okay, we can stop there. See if there's any comments or questions. Thank you, Maharaj, for this <clears throat> class. Thank you so much for preaching us tirelessly always. Thank you. I request devotees if there are any questions, comments, please go ahead. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada and all glories, Guru Maharaj, to you. Thank you again for reminding us of our great good fortune that we have come to receive Srila Prabhupada's mercy. My question is, we come across so many people who come to our temples, take part in the programs, and just hang around on the fringes for years and years and years and uh, somehow never seem to really grab the mercy completely. So I want to ask, how can we encourage them? How can we um, make them understand what supreme good fortune is there in taking full shelter of Prabhupada, following the instructions and yeah. making their way back home? Yeah, that's an organizational concern. When people who come into our temples, it could be a system of uh, accountability where, like I know in one temple, when they have the Sunday feast, they always announce who's here for the first time. And then they ask them to stand up and then they stand up and they say, thank you for coming. Everyone welcomes them in a very simple way. And then uh, they're asked to leave their name and address and when they go, and then there's a follow-up by mail to invite them further to programs with, you know, we also give them a book as a, as a gift for their first visit. So there needs to be an organizational plan that as people come, we can keep them connected in a, in a follow-up type way. And uh, once that's done, you'll see that um, we take an active interest in everybody who comes and that, that'll bring a greater percentage of people closer. If we just have our temples wide open, people who walk in, people walk out. I mean, there's benefit in that, but the follow-up is not there unless they become fortunate and meet a devotee and connect with a devotee who takes a personal interest in them. That's what we've been doing in a more ad hoc type of uh, uh, atmosphere, just like individual devotees meeting the guests and taking some time with them. But when it's done on a, on a, an, in an organized way, it has much more effect. Yeah, and the Sunday feast is one of the best ways to bring in new people and to keep them in in, in the future. That's what the Sunday, Sunday Face program is geared to new people. That's what it's about. Hmm. Okay. Thank you. That's, uh, that's important to understand and then to apply. So uh, from that framework, we can move forward with that. Person. Yeah, and then you, Thank you, you, so you, much. you fill in the, in the ingredients there. That's, yeah. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. And then, you know, there are those who come and just hang around, they won't stay alone. unless they're interested in coming further, they won't, they won't keep coming. I see. Okay. You know, you have to have a system like that. To weed out the, yes, the possible serious people from just the, the casual church churchgoers, you know. <laughs> true, true. I like the prasadam, I like the kirtan, and that's enough for me. <laughs> yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank well, you. that's all right. Mm -hmm. But 
but there are more people who can, if we don't take it, give them a chance to come forward with some some programs, then then we're 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 actually uh, not giving them what they could get. Right. It's up to right. us to have a, some kind of an organized program of uh, you know accountability. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Yeah. Anyone else has any questions, comments, or realizations? Please go ahead. I would encourage people to read the books more. If you read Prabhupada's books more, when you hear the classes, you'll be you'll be able to think of questions that will be relevant to ask. The devotees don't ask questions because they don't read <laughs> or they don't hear enough. So uh, yeah, Krishna consciousness means to develop the, the, philo the philosophical understanding of the activities of devotional service and how we can move forward. So questions are a very important part of our growth in spiritual life. Guru Maharaj, Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shila Prabhupada, all glories to Lotus Feet. Uh, I'm, thank you, Guru Maharaj. Guru Maharaj, I have a question not related to today's class, but is it all right if I ask you? Yes. Um, so we were talk, we, we were reading Bhagavad Gita and uh, we were just having a discussion about the mind and intelligence. And I was a bit confused, the difference between them. Is it possible to just enlighten about the difference between the mind and intelligence? In terms of its in terms of its characteristics, we can delineate that. And then we can give you give you an understanding of its functions too. Its characteristic is the mind is thinking, feeling, and willing. You get a thing. You get a, you think of something. You get a feel for that thought, and then you act or don't act, and that is the feeling activity. Another quality characteristic of the mind is called, uh, what is it called? Sankalpa Vikalpa, to accept and to reject like that. Mm -hmm. That is the mind. Now the, the intelligence is the discriminating factor of the mind. It's a little more subtle than the mind, but it's also part of the mind. And Discrimination, determination are the features of the intelligent intelligence. To become determined, that's intelligence. To, to, to become determined for a particular goal, like I want to become, you know, free from the offenses of chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, so therefore I'll work towards that. That determined effort is the quality of the intelligence. Whereas the mind will, will simply go along with whatever it likes. The intelligence is more discriminating and this intelligence have to be, has to be guided by Shastra. And therefore, uh, then that, that intelligence is what we say, spiritual intelligence, and not just material intelligence. There are people who are materially intelligent, even on the material level, people are more intelligent than others and how to live a material life. 
It's not, it's not so much how much you know or don't know is intelligence. Intelligence is not knows how to maneuver in this world in such a way that you, you can fulfill your desires. That's more, mm -hmm. but that's material. But when you connect that same intelligence to the Shastras, then you're maneuvering through this material world to get out of the material world or to perfect your devotion to Krishna. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, to give a very little simple uh, comparison, and this may be an experience that people have, you're standing on top of a high building and you're looking down. You can see it's a long way down. And the mind will sometimes say, it'll just come in and say, jump. And the intelligence will say, no. So the mind will do that. It will just act indiscriminately according to its function of thinking and feeling. But the intelligence will be the factor where decisions will be made to act or not act, to speak or not speak to go in a certain direction or not to go in a certain direction. These are the features of the intelligence. Now, if you want a, an even more detailed explanation of that, you go to the third canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, and there's a whole section describing the quality, characteristics of the mind, the intelligence, and the false ego also. Okay. <laughs> So we need to uh, so we need to purify the intelligence basically so that we can drive our mind to the spiritual path rather than going to the material, isn't it? Correct. And that purifying the intelligence means the words of the scriptures, the words of Krishna, the words mm. of the spiritual master. Yes. These are the purifying factors. Perfect. Thank you so much. That makes more sense now. Hare Krishna. Krishna. Mohanasani Radha, you have a question? Yes, Guru Maharaj. It's a, quite a delicate question because I got to know yesterday that one of our, our God sisters, I don't want to mention the name, but she said she doesn't see herself anymore as a part of ISKCON. She stopped chanting completely. I asked about her Java and she said like, I don't see uh, myself anymore there. So I don't know if we can help uh, somehow or what can we do in that kind of situation? Well, um, sometimes in, it's, a, it's a timely thing. In other words, if you, again, when should we should make, try to make some contact without forcing, but encouraging and uh, sometimes you have to see what will it take. Uh, you might be talking about the same person I'm aware of and I sent one letter to that person and, and then uh, there was no response to the letter and others have done the same thing with no response. So what can I do? I can simply pray that by Krishna's arrangement somehow something changes well, they again renew their initial desire for Krishna consciousness. That could come by the right association or it could come by some major calamity in their life which forces them back to take shelter of Krishna. But in any case, whatever happens, uh, they have their independence and let's see. But, uh, so at least we can pray because prayers are very strong. Yeah, and yeah, we can try from time to time, not like to see if there's any inroad. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, you can uh, send me the person's name that you're thinking about in an email or just in a, a voice message on my WhatsApp. 
and I'll see if it's the same person that I'm thinking about also. Okay, thank you. I was quite worried, like, uh, if she's doing well, and after four months, she, she responded, like, oh, I'm sorry that I didn't respond to you. I'm fine, but I'm not chanting anymore. So she had some um, big problems. I don't know what she didn't mention. So uh, somehow or rather she has uh, now this situation that she doesn't practice, but I will pray definitely for her that she will yeah. come back. Yeah, then don't make it public because then make, that even pushes them farther away. Yes, yes, that's, that's why I told. I will not mention mm -hmm. the name. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Send me the name by by phone message. I will do. Sri Mukaji, do you have anything to ask? Please go ahead. Thank you, Vinda. Uh, Guru Maharaj, I'm, I'm almost thinking just like uh, Manasini Radha, that how we can help uh, devotees, we see them uh, struggling with something, not really knowing what it is, but we can see that they're not doing so great. Should we, I don't know, will it be impudent or presumptuous to go up to them and saying, can I help you in some way? Or that would be just offensive or uh, how can we go about you know trying you, to actually be helpful I, I, without yeah I, I use your use your intelligence hmm. can't give I can't give you a formula <laughs> but you should, you should be you should be very encouraging and positive and not condemning at the same time hmm. okay thank you generally yeah. Um, I mean, if you're talking to an intelligent person, when I'm saying intelligent, someone who really understands things, then you can tell straight, you know. But most people are not intelligent in the sense that they don't know what's best for them. And even if they, they think they know, you know, they are deluded by the material energy. So what brings people back more is some concern, some kindness, some care, some association, and not preaching. The preaching can be there up to a certain degree. And mm. a big factor is what is that, who is that person and what is their nature and how to respond to that nature. Mm. So all of that, and then we pray, you know, sometimes we pray, we pray that they, you know, they get smashed by material energy. That they, that they can run back to Krishna. Krishna. Okay, good morning. Thank you. Yeah, that's, that's mercy. The material world has nothing to offer for the, for the soul. So if the soul wakes up, jeep jago, jeep jago, then the soul is, is you know, it's, it's, it's good fortune. But if we allow people to sleep and we think, well, it's so nice to sleep, sleep forever because sleeping is, you know, nothing can go wrong when you're sleeping except that you waste your whole life. Right. So yeah, so we we can pray in different ways. And if we have the top opportunity, we may take some timely attempts to you know reach them. Mm. Use your intelligence. There's there's so many factors that are uh, uh, part of this whole situation. You just have to understand. You know what's the best way to approach it or not approach it. Right, right. Yes, I, I definitely want to want to help, not uh, 
add to their difficulties. So mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Sura. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Then we pranam Guru Maharaj. Uh, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shri Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj, for the wonderful, uh, very nice um, uh, lecture. So I have one question about. Uh, this uh, illusional um yeah so illusionary energy and material energy guru maharaj so maharaj you mentioned like when we accept illusionary energy so everything will follow like anxiety and all the impurities and when we accept krishna uh, we will get more peaceful we'll be connected to krishna's energy so uh so guru maharaj like uh uh, mind and intelligence so when we accept illusionary energy that means like mind we are uh, we are connected to mind than intelligence like how should i understand that material mind and material intelligence intelligence okay. can be spiritualized and mind can be spiritualized but then there's a the material mind material intelligence okay mm -hmm. So the material mind and material intelligence is a covering over the spiritual mind and intelligence. Remove that covering with transcendental knowledge. So intelligence is like both spiritual and material we have. So we have to connect to spiritual intelligence. Yeah, material intelligence is an extension of the spiritual nature of intelligence, but it's not, it's false. It has no substance. It's simply part of the illusionary energy. Like the intelligent way, well, well, you know, like even an animal is intelligent how they get food. So the the, uh, the living entity is also thinking how to get food, how to get shelter, how to get relationships, how to defend myself. These are all part of the material energy. And uh, we use the intelligence in order to facilitate our desires. But when we use our intelligence, how to serve Krishna, how to, you know, understand our relationship with Krishna, how to use Krishna's energy for Krishna's service, that's material intelligence, spiritual intelligence, okay. spiritual intelligence. So you can use your intelligence in either way. So and the material intelligence becomes stronger the more you use it and the spiritual intelligence becomes stronger the more you use it yes so every activity that we perform so it should be aligned with the spiritual energy so we have to yeah. practice um, serving krishna use our intelligence to serve krishna so Guru, yeah, well, so. everything's given. Everything is there. You don't have to be. You don't have to really be so intelligent. All you have to do is follow. Yes, follow. Okay. Yeah, whatever the spiritual master and the shastras say, follow. If you're not sure, ask questions. Okay. Well, how do I? This is what I hear. This is what I read. How do I understand it? How does it apply to me? That's an intelligent question. <laughs> Thank you. So when we follow this, automatically the uh, transition happens, as you said. We should not end yeah. your you're, yeah. you're moving. You're moving into the in spiritual energy. Mm -hmm. These mm -hmm. two energies are side by side. But sometimes uh, the illusionary energy, like even though we practice, uh, mind gets agitated because. Uh, we are so much connected um, to the illusionary energy. So, but still, like if we just practice so slowly, like we will overcome Guru Maharaj. Yeah, that's, yes. that transition from material to spiritual is simply mm -hmm. the attachments that we have for the material. That's all. Okay, because of the attachments. The attachments are going, and there is some difficulty in in ridding ourselves of the attachments that's the that's the difficulty but spiritual is pure and it's always it's always joyful mm -hmm. okay. 
if you have fire, you know, it, it has many good qualities, but if you use it in the wrong way, it could burn. Yes, yes, good. Yes, I got it. Yeah. So sometimes, like, I notice that with me uh, in this practice also, um, even though, like, you know, here so many lectures and all that, sometimes, like, uh, you know, mind gets agitated so in that process also develops some guilt feeling okay even after hearing so many instructions why i'm not able to control my mind uh so due to that guilt i feel like my chanting is a little bit going down like you know uh so how to overcome that okay should i accept okay and i should just continue just like, continue yeah. as i said there's a transition stage that is happening yeah, you, you, when you, uh, when you have butter, have you ever made ghee before? Have you ever made ghee? Yes, yes, I do make every, uh, yeah, we do homemade yeah. ghee. Yeah, so you put butter in a pan yes. and you put it on a low fire, right? Yes, Very low yes. Fire. And then you just leave it and what happens, the fatty substance separates from the clear. The clear is actually mm -hmm. the ghee. Where does the fatty substance go? It goes to the bottom or it goes and it goes to the top. It goes so to these are the yeah, these are the impurities that are coming out when we put the fire of devotional service on, on the butter of our of our our mind. So these impurities are coming out. And so the idea is not to identify with them. Just tolerate them and just go on with your spiritual life. Pretty soon you'll have pure ghee. Okay. So, yes, Guru Mahesh, yes, thank you. It's a process. Yes, yes, Guru Mahesh, yeah. Because I have to learn not to hold on to those things. Instead, just move on. Like, yeah. 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 Become attached to Krishna. Yes, yes, Guru Mahesh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your daily nectar. Thank you so much. Yeah. So helping me so much. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, Mother Brenda. I think we're ready to end the class today. It's one hour. Okay, Maharaj. Thank you so much for today, class, Maharaj. Okay, we'll see everyone. Now, tomorrow is the Thursday, and the Thursday program happens at 12.20 uh, UK time. 12.20 London time is tomorrow's class. Make a note of it. It's the, the regular Thursday time. Mm -hmm. And this will be the, with the devotees from Charlotte, so everyone, you can contact the Mother Lavanya and she can help you if you need to get help to put you in connection with the Charlotte uh, program tomorrow at 1220 uh, UK time. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow's class is 11, 511 and 14 is connected with verse number 13. There's, those two verses are together. Um, you, I don't know why they just gave me 14. I can't understand that, but it's 13 and 14. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. We'll see you all tomorrow. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Ki Jai. Jai. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna.